Hello, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Mina Urbina, and I'll be your host. In this webinar, we'll be sharing key insights from Twilio.org's new report, The State of Nonprofit Digital Engagement. We'll highlight how nonprofits are outpacing the private sector in digital engagement, what program participants and beneficiaries expect from nonprofit communications, and the main ways nonprofits can get started building modern communications into their programs. Now, before we get into today's content, I want to welcome you to the TechSoup Global Network, especially for those of you who are new here. At TechSoup, we believe technology like smartphones, internet connectivity, training, and more have the power to serve our communities better. And today's speakers with their Tech for Good app presentation will give you a good taste of what this looks like in action. This event is presented with the support of Twilio, TechSoup's newest partner. Twilio is a customer engagement platform with services including SMS messaging, voice calls, phone numbers, short codes, support plans, and more. Twilio applications include Twilio Flex, Twilio Segment, and Twilio Frontline, all built to help your team communicate with constituents and donors across multiple channels. As a special offer to the nonprofit community, Twilio is offering TechSoup members a $500 credit and ongoing discounts on Twilio products. So please make sure to check that out. So let's go ahead and get started. With us today, we have Janet Park, Senior Campaigns and Product Marketing Manager at Twilio.org. Janet focuses on ways social impact organizations can utilize communications to increase their impact. She's passionate about empowering nonprofits to just transform their digital strategies to help more people and further their mission. We also have Angela Weber, Principal Solutions Engineer at Twilio. Angela loves building and education on cloud-based technologies that enable critical communications. She's based out of Austin, Texas, home of the best barbecue and live music venues. So let's make sure to thank them for being with us here today. But for now, I will pass off to Janet and Angela. Thank you so much for joining us today. Again, thank you TechSoup for the introduction. We're really excited to share some insights from Twilio's recently released State of Nonprofit Digital Engagement Report and some key learnings around how nonprofits are building the future of program delivery. So we created this report because at Twilio, we've seen the extraordinary ways nonprofits are using communications to create impact. And while there are many reports and research documenting the changing digital landscape of the way companies are interacting with their customers, we don't see nearly as much focus on understanding the changes in the social impacts. As we all know, we can't just overlay corporate insights into the social impact world. There's so much nuance here in goals, challenges, and communication styles. So we really sought to examine how the communication landscape has changed for NGOs, healthcare organizations, educational institutions, and public sector teams. We really wanted to examine what is and isn't working so we can all learn and adapt from these trends and insights. So to get these insights, we surveyed 800 nonprofits and 1,500 of the people they serve on the way that communications is being used in the social impact sector today. We're really seeing how nonprofits are planning for the future and reacting to changing needs. We also got to see the way that program participants or constituents, beneficiaries, view the state of this engagement today, as well as what they prefer. So just a note moving forward, we'll call the people that nonprofits and your teams engage with as program participants for consistency. And how does Twilio fit into this picture of digital engagement? Thank you already so much for TechSoup for giving us a great intro here. But for those of you who may not be familiar, Twilio is the world's leading customer engagement platform that brings together people from all across businesses and organizations to transform your customer and constituent experiences. We really believe that communication should be in the toolkit of every developer and program manager. With the Twilio customer engagement platform, you can use any API, any service or solution in a way that fits your needs from fundraising to crisis response. Today, the platform is used by over 10 million developers worldwide to build applications that power over 200,000 organizations reaching people in more than 180 countries. Twilio offers APIs for every communication channel, including WhatsApp, SMS, voice, Facebook Messenger, video, the list goes on. So you can take these channels and incorporate them into the systems and processes that you already use. That means that you can have a seamless integration between your data and your communication tools to provide a truly customized experience for your constituents that showcases that you truly know who they are, what they need, and how they want that message or resource delivered. 
And we know how important this can be in the social impact space for the truly human-centered programs that many of you run. Lastly, at Twilio, we've seen how communications can help social impact organizations solve some of the world's biggest problems and change lives for the better. That's why we started Twilio.org to be the engine behind organizations like yours, helping nonprofits use our digital engagement tools and financial resources to supercharge your reach and scale your impact. You're the experts when it comes to understanding the communities that you serve and the needs that you're providing for. So our team at Twilio.org really aims to be a true partner, equipping you with the digital tools you need to connect with people so you can worry less about deliverability and get to focus on driving toward your mission. So I'm just going to do another quick round of introductions. Like Mina mentioned, my name is Janet Park, a senior campaigns and product marketing manager here at Twilio.org. And I work on helping social impact organizations like yours find the right tools to communicate with the people they serve. I'm joined by Angela Weaver, an incredible principal solutions engineer here at Twilio. She's especially passionate about building and educating folks on cloud-based technology that enables the most critical communications. And she has great experience working with both public sector and healthcare organizations on this. She'll be joining us for the Q&A, so please feel free to send any questions you might have through the Q&A function below, and we'll do our best to answer as many as we can toward the end. Okay. So why are these insights so important right now? <clears throat> Jumping right into one of our key insights from the report, a huge 89% of nonprofits surveyed said that digital communications is critical to their mission. <clears throat> this number, excuse me, this number likely looked a lot lower 10 years ago and even three years ago. I'm sure none of you have been immune to the immense amount of change occurring in the ways that we communicate over the past couple of years. Digital communications is core to the way that we live and work today. And this has also been accelerated by the pandemic, really forcing the hands of many industries, organizations, and teams to adopt digital solutions quickly. You may have felt this shift has been uncomfortable and you don't know the best way to incorporate digital communications or if this is even a positive change. But what we've uncovered is that what felt like a massive pain in 2020, figuring out how to operate and communicate remotely actually turned into a great catalyst for continued growth and impact in 2022, far beyond what was imaginable prior to these necessary shifts. So today we'll be sharing the top insights from the report and some key ways nonprofits are using digital communications today to drive deeper program outcomes. Along the way, we'll be calling out what this might mean for your program and ways you can incorporate some of these learnings. Let's start off with a great myth buster. There's this pervasive idea that nonprofits often lag in digital innovation, and that's simply not true. In comparison with our data from Twilio's State of Customer Engagement Report, which is a survey of private sector B2C companies, nonprofits are actually leading in digital engagement. 65% of the ways nonprofits engage with their customers is digital, and this number is only growing. I know we're talking a lot about digital communications already, around engagement, maturity, and you might not know where you fall on this spectrum. In our survey, we use these references to ask nonprofits how they would rate themselves on their digital maturity. I realize there's quite a lot on this slide, but it might be helpful to have a quick idea about where you might stand in this digital communications journey as we go through the remainder of the insights. For instance, if we look at the use of channels, this first row here, an organization starting their digital communication strategy maybe connecting with program participants on one or two channels, like voice or SMS. On the other end of the spectrum here, a digital leader may have incorporated a cloud contact center to allow a conversation between an agent and a participant to move between WhatsApp, email, and voice without losing any context, because all that data is right there in the platform. If we look at another component, personalization. A digital leader could use that same data to send predictive, dynamic communications to both donors and program participants with a clear understanding of their needs and preferences. A great example of this is donors choose and how they use donor data to send them recommendation based off their location and previous donations to recommend any other fundraisers they may be interested in. Someone developing their digital strategy may personalize their communications with static information, like a person's name. Starting off an email with, hi, Janet, but having the rest of the content be, 
a bit more a general. What are the differences we're seeing between organizations in different stages of digital maturity? Well, we found that digital leaders are rating digital communications a critical organization priority, with the vast majority resourcing their technical teams. And most of these leaders also place personalized communications as priority number one. So what does this mean for you? It might be helpful to stop and assess your digital roadmap and strategy. What are the tools that you're currently using and how are you using them? We saw that while the majority of nonprofits believe that digital communications are critical, only half report that their current strategy is effective. So that signals that incorporating digital isn't just a singular checkbox, not a one and done, but there are many stages of adoption. So what could next steps in building that digital strategy look like for your team? So as you're thinking through your own roadmap, here's why thinking through that entire process might be important. It's clear that digital communications are integral to improving program outcomes for nonprofits. It's not just digital leaders that are innovating. The vast majority of nonprofits are greatly increasing the ways they're engaged, they're digitally engaging with their audience. We saw a tremendous increase in digital interactions on our Twilio platform by nonprofits from 2020 to 2021. The people they serve notice this too. In fact, almost all of our program participants surveyed we're able to identify a benefit from the nonprofits they engage with using digital communications to serve them. But we've been chatting pretty high level about digital engagement. What does it actually look like for nonprofits to use digital communications in their programs? Here are a few of the most common and easy ways nonprofits are using digital solutions. First, nonprofits are using channels like SMS, voice, and email to send automated program or appointment reminders, increase visibility of their programs, they're engaging with their donors, and they're providing multiple options for engagement. They're also using solutions like cloud contact centers, IVRs, which are interactive voice response, and automated bots to route people to support, answer FAQs quickly. They're reporting program outcomes in real time and adapting their program as they go and providing personalized experiences. Oh, okay. So we skipped ahead a little bit. All right. <clears throat> so we started by sharing that 89% of nonprofits see digital communications as core to their mission, but there seems to remain a gap between that understanding and actual execution. For instance, 72% of program participants say that digital communications are important in helping them <clears throat> access services but only 37% of them report the nonprofits they engage, with or they engage with are actually using them in this way. The same gap exists for using digital communications for building program awareness. When you're thinking about your programs, do you have a clear understanding of the preferences of the people that you serve? Are they able to access your services in a way that's easiest for them? Maybe via a text message or phone call or email, or is it currently one size fits all? Are you using these multiple channels to help both currently engaged folks and new program participants discover what type of support you can provide? When nonprofits do implement more digital communications and channels, they feel immediate results. These are the top four benefits reported by these teams, including better experience for program participants, better outcomes for program participants, higher number of program participants served, and improved staff productivity or efficiency. So the top three here are direct program impacts, influencing overall program outcomes. So not only are nonprofits able to help more people and grow their impact, they're also providing higher quality support. So how can you get started thinking about how incorporating more digital communications can quickly help your program? First, take an audit of your current digital strategy. Where are you currently using digital channels to connect with the people you serve, your donors, and on your operations? Or where are you having difficulty connecting with your audience? You can use tools like the digital maturity matrix shared earlier. Likely, you might be able to identify some areas for quick wins and progress. Maybe it's adding text messaging to your donor engagement strategy instead of just email and allowing donors to select which channel they'd prefer when they sign up. On the flip side, you might find that adding email to your engagement with program participants can be a great supplement if you're already focused on text messaging. If your program involves any type of scheduled support, 
maybe a healthcare appointment or schedule time to chat through available services. You can quickly add automated appointment reminders to your messaging flow and easily decrease no-shows. Next, you can get started testing and building. There's often a common misconception that incorporating new channels or building new digital message flows is incredibly difficult. It requires a ton of technical resources. That's not always the case. Visual builders like Twilio Studio allow you to quickly stand up a working messaging app within minutes with no code required. Quick deploy applications and templates also require very low code and allow your team to test and go live with the new messaging flow immediately. Twilio actually launched a template library specifically for social impact use cases last year called the Code Exchange for Good, which is a great place to start. And as I'm sure many of us well, TechSoup has an incredible library of courses providing nonprofits with solution-based training, articles, and how-tos. Now, I'd love to share an incredible example of an organization who had a clear understanding of the changing needs of the people they served and transformed their program strategy to meet increasing needs. So many of you may already be familiar with NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. As the largest grassroots mental health organization in the U.S., they provide emotional support, resources, and direction to inv individuals in need. So with the onset of the pandemic in 2020, they had to move from their physical call center environment and quickly find a way to support the increasing demand of mental health resources. And with just two developers, they built a cloud-based contact center using Twilio's contact center solution, Flex. Now that they could operate fully remotely, they were able to recruit volunteers nationally, quadrupling their number of staff, greatly expanding their hours, and have been able to help 75% more people annually. And considering the incredible life-saving support and resources they provide, that's a huge number. With their modern contact center, they were able to scale their offerings and their channels by integrating them in one place. They added on what web chat, voice, and email, as well as a quality assurance program. They're a great testament to the value of organizations being willing to completely change the normal state of operations to bring their program into 2022 and help pe people the way that it's most accessible to them right now in today's day and age. So you're probably wondering why, if we know digital communications are integral to nonprofit programs, why is there a gap in execution? One key ingredient that we've identified in this digital innovation is developers. And currently a divide exists between digital leaders and beginners around access to developer talent. On one side, we're seeing that a whopping 89% of digital leaders plan to hire more technical staff this year. On the other side, we see that only one in four nonprofits at the beginning stages of digital adoption report having the developer talent that they need. Digital leaders report having more than twice the number of developers on staff as beginners. Encouragingly, 64% of organizations in earlier stages of digital adoption also plan to hire developers in 2022. There is still quite a way to close this gap. With 41% of nonprofits saying that lack of technical support is their number one barrier to adopting digital communications. We understand that there's often many reasons it's difficult for nonprofits to acquire the technical talent that they need. Among them is a need for a change in many of the funding programs or sources that nonprofits rely on. Technical resources are often grouped into overhead or admin costs rather than being seen as a program related expense. There is a need for more flexible funding or funding that recognizes technology and tech resources as a key need. Simply put, nonprofits need more developers and technical resources. However, in-house support is not the only option. Here's a quick look at the multiple ways nonprofits are accessing technical talent. As you can see, there are options for you, depending on where you are in your digital journey. In addition to hiring staff developers, you can also consider partnerships with system integrators, SIs, who can manage technical development for your organizations as is included in the contractors, vendors, or consultants here. And in some cases, pro bono engineering can also make sense. As you continue to develop your digital communication strategy, staffing developers is an incredibly helpful way to have someone understand your program inside and out. They're able to help you continuously improve your digital program offerings as you grow and scale. That's not an option for you right now. You can also work with implementation partners to build digital solutions 
that are still customized for your organization. You can also work with ISV partners for a more out-of-the-box solution that's ready to go. Nonprofits made up of teams of two to global NGOs like the Norwegian Refugee Council work with partners every day to build incredibly high-impact programs. Twilio has a suite of trusted partners that we work with that we're happy to get you in touch with the right experts for you. The next key component imperative to nonprofit program outcomes is personalization and understanding the preferences of the people that you serve. So program participants are clear that they want more personalization, ranking it the number one way they want nonprofits to prioritize improving the program experience. The majority of nonprofits agree, stating that this is a high or critical priority this year. While there is an agreement on personalization, we did uncover a potential mismatch between what participants want and what nonprofits think they want. Firstly, nonprofits seem to believe that they're providing a better experience than program participants state. Next, we're seeing a gap between where nonprofits plan on investing and what program participants prefer. 53% of nonprofits plan to focus on social media when only 39% of participants want this. Meanwhile, 49% of program participants stated that they want nonprofits to incorporate text messaging and really focus there, while only 36% of nonprofits plan to invest here. We do see alignment on a preference for email with around 53% of both nonprofits and program participants really showing a preference for this area. So what program participants have also stated that they want is more personalized communications, more digital communication options and channels, and on-demand services. So what does it look like to provide more of this? The first is fairly simple, and that's to provide more channels. If you're using voice, maybe consider adding SMS, email, or maybe WhatsApp for your audience, depending on what their preferences are. Every community is different based on region, language, and generation on these preferences. And in our full report, you can see some great insights on the difference in channel preferences by generation. Next, nonprofits are building cloud contact centers to provide remote support and integrating the channels that we just mentioned and their existing CRM or system of record. This allows their teams to have a single view of their program participant with the ability to seek conversations across all channels understand their needs, where they're located, and really start creating an informed relationship with them. Lastly, another fairly simple but impactful win is building IVRs or automated bots to help answer any frequently asked questions. This is like the COVID-19 vaccine ch help chat bots that Save the Children created. Folks could chat in on WhatsApp and ask questions around the vaccine and get localized information. This really freed up time for their staff while providing important quality information. Like mentioned previously, you can use visual builders like Twilio Studio to build these applications that help provide that on-demand support for the most frequent needs, while also freeing up your staff's time to field any other pressing needs that require more one-on-one -on -one attention. Benefits Data Trust is another organization using digital communications to better understand and engage their audience. They're dedicated to helping the millions of people nationally facing rising healthcare costs, hunger, and poverty, as well as those in need of education, legal, and housing resources. While there are so many in need, there are billions of dollars of available government and social assistance that goes unclaimed every year, since people don't know that they're eligible or how to access these. To help solve for this, BDT used voice and text message, text messages, two of the most accessible channels to reach out to folks and let them know of their availab or availability and their eligibility. They then work with people to help them complete applications and help answer any questions over the phone. And they're continuing to build new solutions to match participant needs. One of their most recent or more recent programs is Wyatt. Their AI powered chatbot helping thousands of college students and applicants apply for federal aid. As you can see here, students are able to text in their questions 24 seven and get the info that they need. This shows a true understanding of their target audience, meeting students where they are and understanding that they primarily use SMS. The content is formed by financial aid experts and behavioral science experts as well. So they're really engaging them in a way that's been proven to work. So this app is powered by Twilio's programmable SMS 
built on Studio, the visual builder that we showed before, and integrates with Twilio's Autopilot, an AI platform that, in this case, can understand thousands of different ways that students may phrase their questions. This type of personalization and accessibility provided by BDT has resulted in over $7 billion in benefits and services claimed by those that they helped. Lastly, some trends stood out in the data around certain segments of the nonprofit sector. These are not call outs of which sectors are better or worse in engagement, but a unique opportunity to learn from the different facets of digital communications that certain sectors are doing well and scaling. These trends also offer two things. One, an indication of how nonprofit engagement is evolving, and two, a roadmap for other types of organizations to learn from. First, let's look at two examples where we've seen a massive shift in how organizations engage constituents, civic engagement in healthcare. So while it may be a sore point for some, I'm sure most of you on this call are familiar with the emphasis on mobile communications especially text messaging in the civic engagement and advocacy space. Also, this growth is a good reminder of the importance of consent when you're building a program around mobile messaging. But regardless of the bursts of messages you may be getting around the elections, there are many civic engagement organizations working around the year to activate and mobilize their audience. A great example of this is Democracy Works, who run consent-based messaging campaigns to help people who get registered to vote and learn about elections. Or the city of San Francisco and their fantastic new program that allows voters to opt into SMS to find out when elections are coming up, receive a text when their mail-in ballot has been received, and another when it's counted. This builds trust in our democracy and helps constituents engaged in the process. Or consider the massive change we've all experienced in healthcare over the past few years. Back in 2019, which Feels like a long time ago, but isn't that long ago. It was novel just to be able to schedule an appointment over SMS. And this experience is still amazing for organizations of all types. But now video appointments are increasingly commonplace, and you're more likely to be surprised when you can't reschedule an appointment over SMS than when you can. We know that sectors like healthcare tend to be well-funded, and while that's true of some civic engagement organizations as well, this level of investment in technology certainly indicates that organizations are seeing digital engagement as a primary strategy, not secondary. These examples really demonstrate how rapidly we've seen a shift in how organizations are really approaching participant engagement. Another area that stood out was data, stood out in the data was from human services and educational organizations. So an amazing 80% of human service organizations plan to increase their investment in digital communications this year. That's huge. So why are they doing this? The most cited reason is efficiency. Human service nonprofits, and I suspect there are many of you in the audience today, are seeing increased demand for support, and your teams are often not growing at the same rate. So digital communications can provide a way to increase your capacity through automation and mobile engagement. A great example of this is World Central Kitchen, an international NGO led by Chef Jose Andres that provides foods during disasters and often natural disasters. So when their team saw that there were long lines for food during the pandemic and people were waiting hours to get a meal, they knew that there had to be a better way for this. So they built it. Their team built a simple software service and app with text messaging to help people easily find and get a meal. Someone can text this phone number, see what's available, and order it. Simple. No more long lines, and people get the food that they need fast and when they need it. This is one example of how digital communications can really enable you to work more efficiently while serving more people and providing a better experience for people in your program. I also shared a bit about the changes we've experienced in the last two years. But few data points better indicate the direction things are heading than insights from the education sector. So we shared a little bit about this when we were chatting about benefits data trusts. But education nonprofits expect that nearly three quarters of their student engagement will be digital by 2025, which is not that far away. This high proportion of digital engagement may reflect the fact that education nonprofits commonly serve younger populations of digital natives who report a preference for digital channels. 
So utilizing the right channels allows nonprofits to solve significant problems like ensuring all students have access to education. We've gone over quite a few insights today and ways that nonprofits are building the future of program delivery and how you can be a part of it. First, we saw that nonprofits are actually outpacing the private sector in digital engagement. While this is a bit of a myth buster, it's actually not that surprising, given that organizations like yours are working on some of the most high stakes communications. Then we saw that while digital communications is integral to nonprofit outcomes, there's still a gap in execution that we can help close. And one key way to do that is by leveraging more developer talent, whether in-house or working with partners. Then we saw a clear point of view from program participants that personalization is what they're seeking. And you can do that through incorporating multiple channels and contact centers that house helpful information about them. Lastly, we just shared some learnings from segments that are transforming their programs and how your team can do the same. So just a reminder that you can read the full insights and see how nonprofits like Debt Free London and World Central Kitchen are building digital communications in the full report. So you can go to twilio.org slash cylinder 2022 to download the report and we'll also make sure to send the link in the follow-up. We have more information than ever around the ways that digital communications are accelerating program outcomes like we just shared. So if you're feeling inspired to find new ways that your program can be a part of the future of program delivery and benefit from these changes, here's a few recommended next steps to get started. First, assess your digital strategy. Are there any gaps in the ways that you're able to engage with your program participants? Any places that you might not understand their preferences or where are there quick wins to make large impact? Next, prioritize technical resources in your program strategy. Whether that's staffing more in-house developers or working with a partner, we highly recommend you make this a key component of your roadmap. Then you can get started building personalized engagement into the human-centered communications that are core to so many of your programs. But you're not in it alone. So whether you're a team of one or you're a global NGO, our team at Twilio.org is here to help you succeed. Our team of specialists can help you identify what's best for your organization, provide technical support, and connect you with our partners. And by joining our Impact Access Program designed for social impact organizations, you get special access to support, $500 in Kickstarter credit, which is equivalent about 80,000 techs for most US-based programs, and discounts exclusive to nonprofits. Lastly, by joining the program, you will learn about opportunities to apply to impact fund grant rounds. Also, what's super exciting and new, uh, just a few months ago, is that you can use your TechSoup account to get instantly verified and accepted into the Impact Access Program. So we're so glad to be a part of Tech TechSoup's global network and partnering with them to make technology as accessible to nonprofits as possible. So to join, just go to twilio.org slash apply and you can get started and accepted in minutes. All right, thank you so much. I'm going to stop sharing and pass it back over to Nina. And now what's wonderful is we can continue this conversation with Q&A. So one audience member says that they can totally see the benefit of connecting with stakeholders via SMS. Obviously, getting the program off the ground will take some time. Is there a suggested level of contact time to switch over? For example, they get roughly two to three general inquiry questions weekly via email and the same via phone call. So is there a general suggested switch over time between what they have right now and moving over to SMS communications? Yeah, sorry, just to understand the question correctly, are we talking about how often we'd like to communicate with program participants over SMS or... I think it's more the actual operational changes from emails, like getting used to their members, emailing them for inquiries and calling them for an inquiry, and then changing to a new way of reaching out to them. Yeah, that's a really great question. While we don't have a suggested time in terms of moving from one form of communication to another, we think it's actually really helpful to actually do both in tandem. What we often see is that while folks might miss an email, they're much more likely to see something on SMS. And if it's really valuable information that you're providing that is personalized to the program participant, 
they're going to want to get that information over multiple channels and won't be bothered that it's coming from different angles. And also one, one thing to consider is that it's not necessarily a swap, not necessarily moving from email to SNS or moving from SNS to voice, but really thinking about the different ways that you can use each channel for different types of messages. For example, if there is a longer call to action that you're looking for, maybe you're looking for more volunteers or you're trying to provide really in-depth information about a program that they can get access to, that might make more sense over email. Whereas if you're looking for, if you're looking to send really quick alerts or an appointment reminder, that might make more sense over SMS since it's quick. You don't need them to drop everything when they see that text to, yeah, to take that action. And it's really helpful to just think about what is the intended outcome you're looking for in that piece of communication to really help map which channels might be best. So overall, long answer, shortened down, I would say that I would think about using different channels as supplementary to each other rather than as replacements. Thank you so much. So next, how can one best determine the communication preferences of their members and users? That's also a great question. So a lot of the nonprofits that we work with typically partner with a with community organizations, with local chapters that have a better sense of that demographic and what preferences they might like. But there are, like in this report, a lot of great research and numbers around generational differences that we see, community differences that we see. For instance, we see that while WhatsApp might not be as popular in the U.S. versus just general SMS and text messaging, WhatsApp is extremely common and the great, the best channel to use in a lot of different countries and a lot of non-US countries, whereas in the US, obviously SMS and text messaging is the most popular. When we're looking at different generational differences, we've seen that Gen X and above tend to prefer email, whereas our Gen Z millennials really tend to prefer SMS. And so I know we talked a little bit about using different channels for different CTAs, but we can also incorporate some learnings around what is the most accessible channel for different demographics. There's also a ton of differences, just even I, we're saying U.S. broadly in the U.S. and our specific local communities that you work with in the type of messaging apps that they use as well. So would recommend working with any partners that are on the ground that really understand the participants that you engage with, but as well as checking out research like that in our report. And I know there's many more out there that can help you determine the best level there. Awesome. So another question we have here is, do you have any specific advice and thoughts for really small organization? So think under 100 or fewer employees and members. Uh, sorry, couldn't find my unmute button. Yes, specific advice for smaller organizations. I'm going to take this pretty broadly in terms of just getting started. Yeah, I would say a lot of what we shared earlier, I think it's super important to think about what your current digital capabilities are right now. I feel like that helps determine where there are some quick wins. I think it can be easy to believe that we're using SMS, so we've got digital down, but it's really imperative to be able to see what other organizations are doing as well, to see where are there quick gaps that we can help fill. In terms of smaller organizations, and I'm assuming that this might correlate with less technical resources, would definitely recommend looking into working with a partner and our team can definitely connect you with the right partner for you. But the implementation partners and ISVs can help you get started in terms of building a custom solution for your program. There are also out of the box solutions that you can use to get more simple apps up and running. And like I mentioned, even if you have one developer on staff or somebody who took a coding class once, I, there are a lot of templates and quick deploy apps that Twilio provides that you can use to get started building quickly. As we mentioned, you can use Twilio Studio, which is a visual builder where you can drag and drop and build a prototype very quickly. I, I don't have a lot of coding experience myself, but I was able to build an app using Twilio Studio in under an hour. And so definitely accessible for a smaller org. 
Awesome. And I have a question here about the budget spread. So what was the budget spread for the 880 nonprofits used for the state of nonprofit digital engagement report? Okay. So for budget, I'm imagining this is a question around technical budget. We didn't collect that specific information in this report, but that is a really great point of something we want to collect in the future as we continue to, yeah, map the evolution of digital engagement. This is only the beginning as we continue to really map these insights. And so we'll definitely keep that in mind for the next one. Awesome. Thank you. So one audience member saw there are a ton of Power Automate flow connectors for Twilio. Which platform offer is best optimized for leveraging the SMS functionality in conjunction with Office 365? So I typed up an answer in the Q&A portion to that one as well, but I'll send the link in the chat. There is a really long list of different connectors. I would recommend looking through this list and finding ones that fit your use case the best. So some of these are more targeted before for internal communications, like sending a text message to your team when an email reaches a certain inbox. And then some of them are for outgoing communications, send an SMS using Trilio. I saw one that's post a tweet, make a push notification, and send an SMS all in one. I just recommend looking at that list and finding which one fits what you want to do best. Perfect. And on that same thread, what channels are supported by Flex, Twilio Flex, out of the box? So there's SMS, chat, and voice out of box. Am I missing any, Janet? No, I think that's right. Perfect. Thank you. You can also add in things like programmable video, Facebook Messenger. It's all completely customizable. Thank you so much, Angela. And then I think we'll take this maybe as one of our last questions here. If there is anything else, please throw it into the Q&A now while we go through this next question. Is there a sense of how well email works today? As in how many people, maybe percent, that actually read what's sent to them and how long it takes to get to the emails for them to read? That's a really great question. And that really depends on each organization, each team and the content that you're providing. Email campaigns can be really effective when done well. And I know a quick example I shared earlier in our presentation was about donors choose and they're an organization connecting people to fundraisers set up by teachers, classrooms, schools, mainly around like, ed educational fundraisers. And what they've done really well in their email campaign is really using personalized information about each donor to send them information to keep them engaged. So whether that's one year anniversary since you have donated to your first fundraiser or understanding that you're in this specific zip code, so you might be interested in helping funding this high school that's in your area because it might be one that you attended. And also they're using information around the last fundraiser that you donated to and sending more your way that are similar to that. And I think when it comes to open rates, time to open, it really depends on the amount of value that you're providing in both the content and in your title. And so there's a lot of great resources in figuring out how to A-B test different titles, different types of content, and also even just time of day for your audience. And so that's, again, of course, going to differ depending on the region, as well as even age range that you're sending your emails to. And getting as specific as you can around some of those will really help those open rates and ensure that when someone sees your email in their inbox, they want to open it. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Janet. Thank you so much for your time and be sure to get your $500 Twilio credit. Don't forget about that one. So thank you all so much. And we really appreciated having you here.